Amanda, I'm so happy to have another conversation with you that the NFT NYC community can enjoy. Uh, you do so many things and you do them well. Um, can you please introduce yourself to the folks uh, that are watching this conversation? If you're watching, thank you for your attention. But introduce yourself and tell us a bit about what you do as a CEO of Serotonin and the president of Mojito. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me again, Ian. Love doing this with you every year and being part of NFT NYC. Um, so Serotonin is the largest um, Web3 marketing firm. We work with a lot of the leading projects in the Web3 space, um, going to market and bringing their products to market. And lately, we've started to also work with a number of traditional and Web2 companies, helping with what we call Web3 transformation. We actually just published a report on what we call the Web 2.5, which is that gradation of companies moving across and transitioning to Web 3, because we think that similar to digitization, when people move from IRL to digital, we think there's a similar movement of foot from Web 2 to Web 3 that all companies or many companies are gonna to need to go through. So we both work natively on the Web 3 side, L1s, L2s, Web 3 utilities, um, Web 3 infrastructure, um, DAOs, DeFi, NFTs, we're technical, um, and also um, on that uh, Web2 transformation side. Um, we have a product studio at Serotonin. We've learned from a bunch of our clients what they would use in the market if only it existed, and then we build those things ourselves and spin them out. Our first ever spin out last year um, was Mojito, which is the leading NFT marketplace infrastructure. So it's the back end that companies can use to sell NFTs on their own owned websites. And Mojito powers, for example, uh, the Sotheby's metaverse, um, in addition to working with CAA um, and a bunch of other cool brands, like for example, lately, um, Liverpool and the Milwaukee Bucks. So when you talk to these big brands, Tell me a bit about the things that you share to them and why like a bear market is really a builder's market and the importance of them understanding the time to build and the time to uh, go after their goals with the NFT industry. Yeah, absolutely. So when we talk to these brands, the first thing that we say kind of North Star style, whether they're using the Mojito technology or whether they're coming to Serotonin as marketing clients, is that the hallmark of a great Web3 strategy is, is your strategy for entering Web3 strengthening and augmenting the existing Web3 community, or is it diverting resources and diverting attention? And a good strategy will be a good, you know, rising tide lifts all boats kind of approach. And we help those brands really understand the ecosystem and how they can help. And then when we get approached by brands these days, we often get questions about the market. And there's a reason they call it a builder's market. They don't call it a builder's market for nothing. It's not a made up term. It's not a cope. Um, it's not a euphemism. It means that now actually is the time to build. Because a lot of times when these brands start thinking about playing in Web3, they don't necessarily realize yet the processes they're going to need to go through internally to make it happen, whether that's with their compliance department, their legal department, their finance department. Are we going to have crypto on the balance sheet? Are we going to self-custody on crypto? There are a lot of questions that brands need to answer, and it takes time. And so if you start building in this market, that means you're going to have a product actually ready to bring to the community and bring to market in the part of the cycle that you wish to actually launch it. If you start building during the very top of the market, then who knows what kind of condition we're going to be in because it's cyclic, right, um, when you're actually ready to launch. So I think of it a lot like surfing. Right now is the time that you want to paddle, 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 paddle out to that wave. And then when the wave comes, you can stand up on your board and surf it in. So how about timelines and budgets? Do, does this come up in terms of what it's going to take to do well? Of course, the size of the brand and the folks of the project matters, but it maybe budget is less important because it's so variable, but timing likely is important in terms of do people come in with an expectation of, okay, can we get live in a month or in six months? And how do you guide people to have expectations that can be met and exceeded as they uh, take the dive in? Yeah, so usually when brands come to Mojito use, looking to use the software as their back end to start selling NFTs, they think that the lag between having the idea and bringing it to market is going to be because it takes time to build software. Not the case. Usually that delta is caused by them needing to go through their internal processes in order to be able to sort out all the questions that I referred to earlier that they need in order to be able to launch. And so the tech 
can launch in a matter of weeks. Um, we, we've gotten it really down to a down to a machine at Mojito, um, but those processes are often best to start sooner rather than later. Uh, the, the other thing I'd add is, um, even though like the crypto market goes up and down, people that already are fans of existing brands or products or people or art, they're still fans of those things. Um, and so you always consider the consumer, you always consider um, the right price point, the right strategy, um, but where you're offering a community or a product um, that's going to be exciting to people that already love the thing or love to see it expressed in a new channel like Web3, that enthusiasm is still gonna be there regardless of market conditions. So I think it's the perfect time for brands right now to start building. I think it's important to understand what the lived experience right now is of people in their target audience um, and to really bring those people in as a community and align incentives with them. One thing we're often talking to companies about is the fact that community as described in Web3 is really a new category that collapses the category of company, investor, and user or consumer into a single economically and values aligned group of people that we call community. And that word, we use it for a reason. It's not just a buzzword, it's a new kind of unit um, that's a more aligned unit that's striving for values togetherness, for economic um, mutual benefit. Um, and it, it's a new kind of, um, if, if there are cells and, uh, and electrons and um, amoebas and all kinds of different animals in the sort of digital economics world. This is just a new kind of configuration, a new kind of unit. How does community impact the promotion? So in Web2, you know, it's like here we have a five, six, seven, eight figure budget to buy advertising and promote and push what we're doing. But in this context, it maybe is less about paying for advertising and empowering the community to do word of mouth and that type of thing. So can you share a bit about how the community plays into the promotion of these efforts and of these projects? Yeah, so marketing strategy in the crypto space has always had to be creative. And one of the reasons why that was the case at the beginning was there were these bans in Facebook, Twitter, and all the big platforms for using crypto language. So even if you wanted to put money behind an advertisement, you're actually banned from being able to do it, which sent all the marketers getting into crypto out into new platforms, podcasts, community marketing, event marketing, all these new places for capital to flow where they would where they could really get creative. And it turned the standard marketing skill set over on its head and really weeded out who the creative marketers are and who was just kind of pressing buttons on the Facebook ad manager. And so one of the best mechanisms that we've developed and that we practice at Serotonin for this, we call endogenous influencer marketing. So oftentimes if a project goes out and pays some external influencer to talk about the project, that'll come across, especially in English speaking and English sphere of influence markets as inauthentic um, and actually do damage to the project as a result. So what we tend to recommend is first gathering up who are the people, whether they're investors, whether they're partners, whether they're builders on the team, whether they're friends and community members, gathering those people into a single channel or set of channels so that they're easily and efficiently leverageable in a repeatable way by the project to get intended messages out into the market and singing from the same hymnal. Unlike a single centralized company with a single centralized comms function, you're not gonna just have the project saying one single thing to the market that you can completely control. But actually um, by supporting all of those endogenous influencers with accurate information, with, with this is what we want to tell people, this is what we want people to do, you're gonna produce so much more creativity and diversity even though you have less control. So it's about um, really supporting the community to have the information and the assets really easy uh, to be able to go out into the world and, and, and tell everybody about the project. So since Serotonin is the leading agency in Web3 and Mojito is a leading infrastructure company, you must come across so many diverse projects and approaches and uh, you know ideas and creativity and innovation. Uh, can you share a, a bit about that uh, in terms of what is surprising you? What, what is bringing life to you and your team? And to, oh, that's going to be fun and new and unique. Um, I'd love to hear a bit about that from you. Yeah, so maybe this is a little macro, but People, people talk about like what, what, what are the catalysts that cause, cause market cycles to change? And I think 
in the last kind of up market cycle, you saw that 69 million sale of the people to Metacoven. You saw Michael Saylor putting Bitcoin on the balance sheet. But most interestingly to me, you saw YFI and synthetics and the invention, whether that was by Kane or whether that was by Andre Kronhe, they debate it, of yield farming. And so part of what actually drove that kind of enthusiasm into that market as the wave was coming back was uh, genuine innovation. So like when we're thinking about DeFi, we're not just thinking about translating over the same exact financial services, buying and lending from TradFi. We're thinking, how can we actually use this substrate to create new things and to innovate and to create genuinely new financial products and practices? Um, and so... Where, where I see that actual innovation is what's really exciting to me, because I think what's going to continue um, getting more people excited about this space and bringing people into the space is innovation. And the more people in the world know how to become blockchain developers or blockchain marketers, the more people that know how to manipulate this clay to work with this substrate and understand Web3, the more at-bats we have to make sure those kinds of innovations happen that drive all this value creation. And those kind of innovations don't come from Sand Hill Road. They don't come from traditional places or Silicon Valley. They can come from anywhere in the world where people have the information and Wi-Fi, you know, and a, and a computer. They, they come from anywhere in the world. And because we end up um, seeing all these projects really early in their existence, diligencing them, um, meeting them, we're in a really cool position to most likely see some of these things early. Um, and, and, and that's what gets me excited is meeting these founders that are actually coming up with uh, novelty out of the Web3 substrate. You know, a lot of the focus um, that we talk about are creators and communities. Uh, but one thing I'd love to hear from you on is developers. Um, you know, so if a developer says, I want to dive in, I want to be, part, I want to work for Serotonin or Mojito, or I want to be a part of a project, um, is there certain types of disciplines that they need to focus on mastering, you know, Solidity or Rust? I mean, is there anything specific that you'd guide a developer? If you want to take this step, be a part of the Web3 revolution, here's a starting point, or here's something that you really need to master in order to provide a lot of value to this uh, industry. Yeah, I would say Solidity. Um, I, I think solidity for developers is really important if you have to pick one thing. Um, I think that for artists learning how to make digital art or digital versions of their art or digital twins of their art and how to market those things as NFTs and sell them in that context and build community is really important. And so, yeah, I think of creators and artists in one bucket, I think of developers in another, sometimes they go together. Um, but yeah, solidity and just knowing how to um, create communities around digital art. Well, I think it'd be fun to talk about a project that you're involved in, uh, the Crypto Musical. And so <laughs> maybe you could introduce that to all of us, and then I could ask a couple of questions about that development. Yeah, of course. So one of our really fun side projects at um, Serotonin is we um, created and we're producing, along with some other producers and partners, um, Crypto the Musical which is the first ever musical to be funded by a DAO, Broadway musical to be funded by a DAO, um, which tells the story of Web3 through one woman's journey starting um, a blockchain startup in 2017. And she goes through a whole process. She does an ICO, she gets hacked, um, she has a fun love story, she um, gets listed on exchanges, she learns about the Howey test, uh, the hard way, um, she um, ends up pivoting into DeFi and we learn about yield farming, pivoting into NFTs, and we have a great song called Right Click Save. Um, and then some, you know, fantastic choral numbers with singing and dancing. And don't worry, um, this is not being performed by blockchain people. This is going to be performed by real um, Broadway actors um, and performers. And, you know, our, our idea is this is one channel that's never been used before, Broadway, to tell the story of crypto and Web3, which has been pushed through so many different channels in our world. Um, and it seemed like this one missing piece for us. Um, and so the idea is that it's the humor of the Book of Mormon meets the heart of Legally Blonde, meets the marketing playbook of Hamilton, meets the actual story of Web3. And we think this is gonna be a mechanism to engage people in Web3 that haven't been reached by it yet. So you got everybody's attention. Um, 
maybe you could give some insight. How can people get involved, right? Uh, there's the Broadway actors, maybe accredited investors that may be interested in participating, but how can people jump into the Dow? Like, give some insight. If people love this idea and now their ears are perked, they got goosebumps, how, what would be a step that they could take to investigate being involved in this crypto musical? So we're actually going to be performing several of the songs um, from the musical at several upcoming crypto conferences, um, including NFT NYC. I think we're going to also be doing a pretty cool drop at NFT NYC of some of the songs from it. And at some of the NFT N NYC side parties, we're going to be feeding the songs to some of the DJs to see if they want to play it or do their own remixes. So it's coming to a stage near you pretty soon. We're also going to be opening up the DAO soon for fundraising. It's accredited investors only and you'll be KYC'd. Um, so if you're willing to do that, you'll be able to actually um, be part of the DAO. You'll be able to receive profit sharing from the musical. And actually, if musicals are successful, they can um, generate pretty good returns. Hamilton generated 600% returns um, for investors. We obviously don't know how this is going to do, um, but there is some, some positive uh, role model for us there. Um, and then at various contribution levels, uh, you have various uh, rewards, um, whether that's VIP tickets to the opening, coming to the red carpet, doing behind the scenes with the actors and actresses, and even at a certain threshold, being able to name a character and make a cameo on stage. So there are a lot of really cool opportunities. If you want to get involved in this right now, you can follow the musical DAO um, on Twitter. We um, also have cryptothemusical.eth. And on Twitter, there's a link that we're refreshing every week as it goes bad um, to the Discord, where you can get involved in the Discord community where we're going to be pushing everything to. Well, I sure enjoyed this conversation. Um, you know, I know you're in Puerto Rico, and I was wondering if you could just speak to physical communities, because Puerto Rico has a very vibrant community of Web3 enthusiasts and builders. So can you just talk for a moment before we wrap up about the importance of physical gatherings, whether it's big events like NFT NYC and ETH Denver, or if it's just consistent gatherings like Crypto Mondays that uh, Pedro runs uh, in Puerto Rico. So can you share a bit about the importance of community that's physical IRL? Yeah, absolutely. So I actually found out about Ethereum in 2015, thanks to my physical presence in Brooklyn, New York, um, where I met a lot of the early Ethereum folks. And I was just blown away when I realized what it was and I dropped everything and joined the circus. And I don't, I think if I hadn't been there, if it had just been digital, maybe I wouldn't have been reached by that message. And so I've um, tried to create or participate in and help grow those same kinds of IRL communities everywhere that I've lived. And now living on the island in Puerto Rico, there's just such an incredible group of people that have lived here a long time, that have been born here, people that moved here, um, people that are here for all kinds of reasons that care about Web3 and crypto. There are very regular meetups. Um, actually, G Money, um, the NFT influencer and I um, co-created the first ever um, NFT conference here in Puerto Rico called Metaverso. And we're going to do it again next year in concert with one of Puerto Rico's biggest events, which is called Sensei, the Festival of San Sebastian. Uh, we're going to do all kinds of cool Web3 activations there. And so we've managed to create this really fascinating um, fusion of really great builders. There's a great technical university here, um, Mayaguez. There are four different accelerator programs here. Um, we've been able to create a DAO called Startup Island um, that's investing in all Puerto Rico local um, Web3 startups and really try to spin the flywheel of growth because they're all the raw materials, right? There's great talent, um, both on the builder developer side, also on the cultural and artistic side. And by bringing all those things together, I think we can um, create something really great here. Well, as always, it's very inspiring to speak with you. Uh, you're such a great leader and you've been so consistent in building, uh, you know, and you've helped so many brands. You think about Prada and Sotheby's and CAA and some of the different organizations that you've been able to impact and bring them into this world. So we celebrate you. We celebrate your team and we're excited to spend time with you at NFT NYC this year. And I thank you so much for jumping on and sharing a bit of your story and what you're working on with the community today. You're, you're so kind, Ian. Thanks so much for having me. And if anyone wants to get in touch, um, our website serotonin, spelled like the neurotransmitter.co. And I'm Amanda at serotonin.co. If you want to shoot me a note, mojitos at mojito.xyz. 
Well, what a wonderful invitation for the community. I hope that people will take advantage of that. For anybody watching our